the outcome of interest. So what is your aerobic fitness? How strong are you? How much muscle do you have? Seems to be associated with larger differences in all cause mortality than the actual training to promote those things. So basically having really high levels of aerobic fitness is predictive of a pretty large reduction in all cause mortality. Uh, doing aerobic training is associated with a reduction in all cause mortality, but not as large as the reduction uh, observed with simply having really high levels of aerobic fitness. Same thing with resistance training. Doing resistance training is associated uh, with reductions in all cause mortality rates, but those reductions don't seem to be as large as the simple difference in mortality between people who are just very strong in old age and people who aren't. So, you know, the, the characteristic is predictive of uh, pretty large differences in mortality. The actual training to promote the adaptations uh, uh, related to those physical characteristics are also associated with reductions in all-cause mortality, but not as large as just differences in the characteristic itself. And so I think that's worth noting. So one, like the the stuff with resistance training, it's, it's not just kind of a one-off thing. We see something very similar with cardio as well. Um, and I think that the question raised, uh, has a pretty, ha has at least one, uh, potential and I think very likely answer. So, you know, if, if being stronger and having more muscle is predictive of lower rates of all-cause mortality, um, you know, why isn't resistance training and, and as much of it as possible predictive of similarly large reductions in all-cause mortality? And I think that's just because when you're dealing with those characteristics, you know, not who's training for what, but just simply as you're entering old age, who has higher aerobic fitness, who has more muscle mass, who has more strength. I think that's more just reflective of genetics, but also lifestyle kind of throughout your entire life. So, you know, if you're, um, if you hit like 60, 70, you're still, you still have a fair bit of muscle. You're still in pretty good shape. More often than not, that means you've lived a generally healthy, generally active lifestyle up to that point. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's basically, <laughs> it's basically a question of like, um, or it's a matter of, you know, if you're going to live 80 years, like the first 70 years of your life, that's, that's the bulk of your life. And all of the stuff you did during that time is going to influence how the next 10, 15, 20 years for you go versus, you know, if you lived a generally inactive, not particularly healthy life for the first 70 years of your life, and you pick up some resistance training, pick up some cardio, that is probably going to be good for you. But it, and, and I certainly wouldn't discourage people from doing that, but it's probably not going to be quite as helpful as it would have been to have been more active for the previous 70 years. And so I, I think that's basically what's going on. And the other thing to note is that es especially for the metas and, uh, and cross-sectional studies that are looking just at, you know, do people with more muscle mass live longer than people with less muscle mass? What, what those studies tend to do is they just uh, put people into quartiles and just compare between quartiles. So how long do people in the very top quartile of muscle and strength live versus the people in the lowest quartile of muscle and strength? And getting into that top quartile doesn't require <laughs> training like you want to be a world-class powerlifter. So j just think about everyone you know in their 60s and 70s uh, and just think like, Hey, where, where would the 75th percentile of muscle and strength fall? You know, like probably a very small minority of people, you know, who are approximately that age are still legitimately super strong and jacked. Like, you know, most of them, like people, people who probably haven't even lifted weights and are just like kind of active would probably be, be in that top quartile. Um, so, you know, that's what we're talking about. Like. If you're in decent aerobic shape, you have a decent amount of muscle, you have a decent amount of strength, that tends to be reflective of, of living a pretty good life up to that point. And being in good shape, having more muscle, having more strength, being predictive of lower rates of all-cause mortality doesn't necessarily imply 
that training to maximize your aerobic fitness, you know, like trying to set the the marathon world record for people in the 80 year old age class, uh, or, you know, trying to absolutely maximize muscle and strength. It, it's, it's not necessarily implied that you need to do those things to reap the longevity benefits of generally being in good aerobic shape, generally having a decent bit of muscle, generally having a decent bit of strength. Like there's, there's that disconnect between the physical characteristic itself, which, you know, training does go into, but also just your lifestyle throughout your entire lifespan and your genetics, like all of those things affect that versus just the training component itself. So it's, it's logical to assume that if you train for a p particular physical outcome and that physical outcome itself is predictive of all-cause mortality, the training itself will be similarly predictive of shifts in all-cause mortality of a similar magnitude, uh, but that, that just isn't the case.